Mutual presents The Mysterious Traveler. This is The Mysterious Traveler, inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, that it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable, if you can. Where are we going? Why, today we're going to venture into a fantastic and little-known field, the human mind. It's a story I call... Mind Over Murder. On a stretch of green lawn at the top of high cliffs looking over the Atlantic Ocean, the great Ricardo, who claims to be the world's greatest mind reader, is practicing his art. He's preparing for the vaudeville tour he's soon to begin. Assisting him are his lovely young wife, Ellen, and uh, Carl Lagarde. That's it, Carl. Tie the handkerchief tightly over my eyes. Now, are you sure I can see nothing? Nothing whatever? I know positive you can't, Mr. Ricardo. I'll bet my month's wages on it. You are quite right. My eyes are in darkness. But my mind is not. Ellen? Yes, Ricardo? Did you bring out the basket of books I asked you to? Yes. I have them here. All right, Carl. Go pick a book out of the basket. Any book at all. <laughs> sure thing, Mr. Ricardo. Now what? Now open it to a page, any page. Have you done this? Yeah. Good. Now concentrate on the book. Think about the title and the number of the page. Think about it now. Ah, oh, yes, it is coming to me. The title is Murder by Expert and the page. You have opened it to page 27. That's right, Mr. McCurdy. But gosh, I, I don't know how you do it. It's very simple, Carl. With the eyes of my mind, I read your thought. Now, I want to try something else. Ellen? Yes, Ricardo. Sit in the wicker chair over here on my right. Turn your back to both me and Carl. You, uh, you aren't going to... Please do not argue. Do as I say. I just can't. Yesterday, my head ached for hours, please. It would come easier in time. Sit down. All right. All right. Now make your mind free of all thoughts. Yes, sir. I want you to look with your mind into Carl and to read there what his eyes see on the page before him. Not direct. I have said that you must. All right. I'll try. Now, Carl. Yes, Mr. Curdle. Take another book. Open it to the first page of the story and concentrate on it. Right. I get you. Now, Ellen, read the page at which Carl is looking. I command you, by the powers of the mind, read. My head hurts, though. It's so difficult to split. Read. I... I... see something. Words. Title, vision, judgment, by H. G. Continue, please. No, I can't make it out so good. I can't say anything clearly. Oh, my head. Uh, Carl, was she correct? Uh, well, yes. Well, that's all I want to know. You can leave now. Uh, okay, Mr. Ricardo. Uh, the roads are deep watering. I better tend to them right away. Yes. Right away. That's the imbecile. He's afraid of me. How do you feel, Ellen? My head hurts. Oh, there, there, my dear. It will quickly pass. And in no time you'll find the whole thing as easy as powder in your nose. Oh, Ricardo, I can't. I, I, I just can't help you in your act when you tell me to try to read something in Carl's mind. I feel as if my brain were going to split. You will help me, my beautiful one. Oh. You will see. Now, I'm going into the house. You may sit here and look at the ocean until your head feels better. Oh, you would have company. 
I see my handsome young press agent coming forth. You must be nice to him, Ellen. He's really a very good press agent. Oh, there you are, Ricardo. I was looking for oh. you. It's too bad your mind is one of the few I cannot penetrate, Tom, or I would have known that. Uh, was it about something special? Oh, just about these advanced stories to go out of the Boston editors. I have them all written. Oh, excellent. excellent. I'm going up to the house now, and I'll read them right away. Uh, stay and keep Ellen company, Tom. I'll see you both perfectly. All right, Ricardo. What's the matter, darling? What's he been doing? It's nothing, Tom. I just have a little headache. they are making you work with him in his act again, hasn't he? Please, Tom, I don't know. I'm all right, Helen, really. Helen, listen to me. You know things can't go on the way they are. You've got to leave Ricardo, do you hear? Leave him in divorce. No, Tom, I can't. I just can't. You're scared to death of him, but there's no reason to be. He's just a phony mind no, reader. No, Tom. He's not phony. He can read mine. Sometimes he tells me just what I've been thinking. Oh, Tom, if I can see. I wish I could read it, but he won't let me. If I tried and I'd do something... Something terrible. No matter what you're doing, I'm going to get you away from Ricardo. I'll kidnap you if necessary. I'll... Here he comes back. Oh. Well, I'm glad to see you're feeling better, Helen. Is it Tom who has put that sparkle in your eye and that blush in your teeth? I... Of course not. I would not like it if I thought so. I should be very angry if my beloved had eyes for anyone but me. But of course, you haven't. Have you, Ellen? No. No, of course not. For you love me devotedly, do you not? I love you devotedly. You always will in this world and in the next. I always will in this world and the next. There you see, Tom. You see why I dare leave my lovely Ellen alone with you? I have perfect faith in her. When we start our tour week after next, I will be quite busy much of the time, and I hope you won't mind keeping Ellen from being lonely. I'm sure the trip won't bore you. I expect it to be most entertaining. <laughs> Ricardo's still in the diner. Are you ready? Yes, I, I guess so. I was putting on my hat and coat. I didn't pack anything because you said not to, but... Oh, Tom, I'm frightened. Ellen, you've got to get hold of yourself. Ricardo's not superhuman. No, sometimes I think he is, Tom. I'm positive that he knows everything he thinks. He's just playing with it. He seems so, so amused ever since the tour started. He seems to have been deliberately throwing us together just to see what happened. Stop worrying. In a minute, you'll be through with him forever. The bus for Chicago leaving Bridgeville five minutes after we get off. In Chicago, you can stay with my mother until you can get a divorce. Then you're going to marry me. Come to the place. Listen, that's the whistle for Bridgeville. We're going to the station. Quick, get your coat. All right, Tom, come to the window. Here, I'll give you a hand here. You got it on? Ricardo! Yes, my dear. Come here. I was worrying about your headache, so I left my lunch to come and see how you were. Well, I'm feeling a little better. I was going to take a walk on the platform and get some coffee. Yes, I see you have your coat out. Oh, but alas, we only stopped for a minute. Hardly long enough for a walk. No, no, I, I suppose not. Uh, so, uh, this is Bridget. The pretty town. On the main bus route to Chicago, I understand. Uh, is it? Uh, Someday I should show you Chicago, Ellen. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Yes. I would like that. Ricardo, stop torturing. Torturing? Ellen? Why, Tom, what a curious idea I would give my life for Ellen. And she for me, wouldn't you, darling? Yes. I'd give my life for you. To most people, that is an empty phrase, but Ellen means it. I will prove it to you, Tom. I'm not interested. Oh, but you are. Ellen, my love. Yes, Ricardo. Ellen, I'm taking a revolver from my pocket. Here, now you take it from me. Yes, Ricardo. What are you up to? Point the revolver at your heart, my dear, and pull the trigger. Yes. 
Mr. Carter. Ellen, stop! Stop! No, Tom. Let go, my wrist. You shall not interfere. Oh. Ellen, pull oh. the trigger. Yes. I'll pull it. Ellen! You... <sighs> Nothing happened. No, of course not. The gun was empty. But Ellen didn't know that, did you, my darling? No. I didn't know that. So she would have died just because I asked her to. Such devotion is very rare. It is the kind that lasts through all eternity as ours do. For we shall always be together, Ellen and I, while we live and after we die. Nothing will ever separate us. Nothing. Whatever. <laughs> And so the great Ricardo's triumphal tour continued. Newspaper stories told of his amazing feats, and of the feats almost as marvelous performed at his direction by his pale and lovely wife. Twice Tom urged Dellen to flee with him, but both times Ricardo appeared upon the scene, smiling as though knowing every word that had been said. So at last Tom changed his tactics. Waiting until one evening when Ricardo was in the midst of his performance, concentrating on holding a great audience spellbound. And now, ladies and gentlemen, someone among you is thinking of the initials E N. Somebody quite close to me. Tom Some listened for a moment. But he was quite sure that Ricardo's attention was fully absorbed. Then he left his place in the wings and slipped swiftly backstage to knock on a door marked with a gold star. Ellen. Oh, yes, Tom. I want to talk to you. You shouldn't be here, Tom. Never mind Ricardo. Ricardo. Put on your coat. My coat? But the performance won't be over for half an hour. Ellen. Ellen, I've got a plan to fool Ricardo. Will you trust me? If he catches us, he might kill you. If there's one time, he's not going to be clever enough. Just put on your coat and come along without asking any questions. But, um, uh, where are we, Tom? We've been driving for an hour, turning this way and that, and I haven't any idea which way we've come. You're not supposed to have, Ellen. Don't you see, if you don't know where you are, Ricardo can never know either. Even if he can make contact with your mind from this distance. I never thought of that. <laughs> but I did. So this time I made my plans without telling you. They filled you in. Oh, what a quaint little place, Tom. And what a lovely view over the hill. Yes, sir. It's a funny little place. I found the ad in the paper. That's I've engaged a room for you and one for me. We'll stay here tonight. Tomorrow, Ricardo will be in Buffalo, and we'll be heading in the opposite direction. Tom, there's someone standing in the shadow beside the porch. That's probably the manager waiting for us. Is that you, Mr. Adams? No, Tom. This is I, the cop. What? Oh, Ricardo. Yes, my beloved. I've been waiting for you. What took you so long, Tom? How did you get here? How did you know we were coming here? Why, well, Tom, it was I who told you to bring Ellen here. That's a lie. No one knew we were coming here but myself. Did you think this was your idea? On the contrary, I put the thought into your head, every bit of it. That's impossible. I even suggested to you to look in the paper where you could find the advertisement for this delightful little inn. I, I don't believe it. Yes, Tom, at last, after painful effort, I have succeeded in forcing my thoughts into your mind. And now, now I have another little matter to settle with you. Your undesired attentions to my wife. Ellen isn't your wife anymore, Ricardo. She's left you for good. Ellen, is that true? No, Ricardo. I love you. Ellen, he's making you say that. Ellen, my dear, tell Tom just how you feel toward him. I've been playing with you, Tom. To amuse myself. You've been very stupid not to realize it. I'm not impressed by your tricks, Ricardo. 
Ellen is leaving here with me now. Ellen is not leaving. But you are. You see that railing behind you? Beyond it is a 50-foot drop to a rocky ledge. What of it? In a moment, you are going to fall accidentally over that railing and be killed. You see, there are only the two of us. And I am far stronger than you. Oh! Uh, now, I will show you a trick of oriental wrestling. Come uh, look out! He's walking uh, down the way. Maybe I know some tricks. Uh, Who a card off? Now, how do you like this one? Ah! Uh, 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 He's lying down there on the ledge. His body's all twisted. Yes. I'm... I'm afraid he's dead. No. No, he isn't. He's alive. He's in pain. He's making me feel pain, too. No. 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 Stop it. Stop it. No, the great Ricardo, mind reader extraordinary, was not dead. A week afterwards, he hovered on the borderline between life and death. And then as if pulling himself back to life by the sheer strength of his will, he slowly won his fight. But though he lived, his fall had paralyzed his body, leaving only his mind truly alive. He lay in a hospital bed, still breathing, but unable to move, to speak, or even to open his eyes. So... So he's definitely going to live. There's no longer any doubt of it. It's almost a miracle. I didn't think any man could survive such an injury. He wouldn't let himself die. Well, most of us want to live, I've discovered. I mean, he deliberately refused to die. He kept saying to himself, I will not die. I will not die. You could hear him? But he's paralyzed. He can't speak. I could hear his voice. In my mind. Oh, I see. Yes, he's going to live. But he'll never move, nor speak, nor see again. Yes, he knows that. I beg your pardon? Ricardo knows that he'll never recover. He wants to go home. I have to take him there. I will look after him. Oh, Ellen, you can't. I have to. I'm in his prison again. Prisoner of his mind. From this time I'll never escape. And so the great Ricardo returned home, a living dead man. There in the house on the cliff, aided only by a nurse who relieved her at night, Helen cared for him. Tom stayed close by to help her in any way he could and did his best to persuade her to turn Ricardo's care over to professional nurses. Ellen, listen to me. You can't ruin your life like this just to care for a man you hate. I have to. I can't go away. You won't let me leave the house. If I do, I find myself turning back without knowing what I'm doing. But, Ellen, you well, My mind isn't my own. He controls it. Lying in his bed in that room there, never moving Ricardo controls my mind. Oh, Ellen, I'm sure that's just a delusion a psychiatrist could prove it to you. Ricardo was injured, helpless. But his he... mind isn't. More powerful than ever. All his strength is concentrated in it. It went for the power of his will, he died. He doesn't want to die. He's planning something. Planning what? I don't know. But he still hates you and wants revenge. How oh, you are letting your imagination run away with you. What can a man in Ricardo's condition do? I don't know, but he has something in his mind. Tell him you're overwrought. You need sleep. You Look, darling. Why not take a sedative and go to bed? And in the morning, we can talk again. I have to wait until the night, nurse. Yeah, all right, I'll stay with him until then. Now, go on, go on. Get to bed. All right, Tom. I do need rest. But uh, you better wait in the room with him. I'll, I'll go in now. Good night, Ellen. Good night, Tom. So, there you are. The great Ricard. A man who was better than anyone else in the world. And now you're a living dead man. 
I wish you were a dead one. Then why don't you kill me now? What? Why don't you kill me? Just put your hand over my mouth for a moment and you'll be rid of me. Carter. You can't be talking. You're paralyzed. I can speak to you, Tom. I speak with my mind, not with my voice. No, I, I don't believe it. You always were stubborn. Listen. Just now you were trying to get Ellen to leave me. But she never will. Ellen and I are joined together for all eternity. I'm going to free her from you somehow. Do you hear, Ricardo? Oh, now you're threatening me. That means you do believe my mind can speak to yours. Good. We'll have many interesting conversations in the days to come. Now, I'm going to rest. Good night, Tom. I shall see you tomorrow. You won't want to come, but you will. Ah, oh, Tom. It is good of you to pay me another visit. I was hoping you would come today. In fact, I might say I was willing it. Myself, I, I'd imagine this. Stubborn, stupid Tom, always fighting against the inevitable. You tried to stay away today, didn't you? But you couldn't. No, I couldn't. And you're convinced now you're not suffering from a delusion. All right, all right. Not a delusion. So what, Ricardo? I have some interesting information for you. But first... Sit down. I think I'll stand. Sit down. I won't. I... <laughs> you see? You are seated. Are you? Yes. I forced you to seat yourself because my mind and the stamps control over your mind. <laughs> so sit quietly and hear what I have to say. All right. What is this information of yours? I think that makes me sorry, do you? Doctors do not know it, but my heart is weakening. If I relaxed my willpower for an instant, I would go out like a candle in the wind. Oh, no, the better. I have so. I had great plans, but no matter. In your mind now, I read the thought, Ellen will be free, but you are wrong. Ellen is coming with me. What do you mean? What do you mean, coming with you? I have said that we would be together in life and in death, and so we shall. Ellen and I will die together. Devil, if I thought you could hurt Ellen, I'd kill you myself. No, no, Tom, you will kill me. You are going to kill Ellen. No, that's impossible. There is a drawer. That table beside you. Open it. No. Open it. No. You, you. In the drawer is my revolver. Pick it up. No. You pick it up. Yeah. Well. With that gun, you are going to shoot Ellen. You will be executed for it as a murderer, and thus I will have my revenge. Because we shall die almost at the same instant. My soul and Ellen's will be forever joined. No. You can't force me to hurt Ellen. That's one thing you can't do. Stand up. No, you... Oh. You see, my mind does control yours. Though I lie here helpless, but I command you must do... I'll shoot you instead. Uh, you see, you cannot even lift the gun. Now, listen to me. Behind that screen, across the room, is a couch. There, Ellen lies asleep at my orders. You will walk over there. You will point the gun at her forehead, and you will pull the trigger. You can't make me do that. Walk, Tom. No, I. Oh. Another step. There. Now, move. The 
the screen aside. No, no. Move the screen. Adam, Adam, Adam. Adam. Aim the gun well. Fire! Oh, Helen! Helen, wake up! She will never wake again in this world. Pull the trigger! I won't! I won't! Pull the trigger! No! Helen. Oh, Helen. Yes. Yet her mind has gone blank. I can no longer send it. You have killed her. Helen, I tried not to do it. I tried not to do it, Helen. Make sure that you die too, Ricardo. That is not necessary. I am going now of my own accord. I am relaxing. I am letting myself slip into this dark silence of death where Ellen is waiting for me. She's there. She's just across the threshold. Waiting. I shot you. I thought I killed you. Huh? Killed you? Yes, but I, I, I didn't. I, I only wounded you. Careful. Oh, I, I don't understand, Tony. Where is it? It's a car, I... Stranger feeling that he's gone. He is gone. He is gone. Oh, I see it all now. I thought I'd killed you. Because I thought so. Ricardo thought so, too. But I was wrong. And because I was wrong, he was wrong, too. No. He's dead? Yes, Helen. Free of him. Free of him forever. <laughs> Ricardo made a mistake and let himself die, believing that you were already dead. Oh, yes, my darling. This time he's gone for good. Ricardo was clever. But in the end, he outwitted himself. Did you enjoy our little trip? What became of Tom and Ellen? Why, Ellen's wound was serious, but far from fatal. Not nearly as fatal as Ricardo's mistake. Tom and Ellen are very happy now. But I wonder if they're as safe as they think they are. When you're dealing with a mind like Ricardo's, can you ever be quite sure, even though he is dead? I knew a man once everybody thought was dead, and he... Oh, you have to get off here. I'm sorry. But I'm sure we'll meet again. You see, I take the same train every week at this time. Just heard The Mysterious Traveler, a series of dramas of the strange and terrifying. In today's cast were Maurice Toplin, James Van Dyke, Jan Minor, Ian Martin, and Rod Hendrickson. Original music was played by Charles Paul. The Mysterious Traveler is written, produced, and directed by Bob Arthur and David Cogan. Listen next week to a tale titled 
death and the devil. Another strange and terrifying tale of the mysterious traveler. 